Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the official Nerd Talk channel. My name is Tyler, aka Mind of a Nerd. I'm joined by my co host AJ Reacts to it. We are back for another episode of Originals versus Remakes. And today we are covering 101 Dalmatians because today is my 22nd birthday, baby. Woohoo! Happy yes, birthday. Sir. Happy birthday, my guy. Uh, Big weekend, big weekend. Uh, it is my birthday, but we will also, at the time of this recording, we're going to be on a plane to Vegas to celebrate our very own Alex Thomas getting married. Big weekend, big weekend. Mm -hmm. But today we celebrate me. Celebrate me. Celebrate <laughs> Alex. But um, yeah, uh, for when we laid out the OVR schedule for the year, we were like, we'll, we'll give me and AJ uh, our favorite movies that have been remade you know for our birthday so uh aj's is coming in november we won't spell what that is but um yeah mine is 101 dalmatians because i'm a uh you know I, I love disney and this is one of my favorite movies ever so without further ado let's get into the original 101 dalmatians so the original 101 dalmatians was released in 1961 directed by clyde Jer Jared not Leamy pronounced that wrong. I'm sorry. Hamilton Lusk and Wolfgang Reitherman. Um, two of these men collaborated for <clears throat> Lady in the Tramp, Peter Pan, Cinderella, and Alice in Wonderland. Some hits and duds, but uh, iconic Disney animations nonetheless. And it tells the story of two Dalmatians making more Dalmatians and um. This evil woman, Cruella DeVille, coming to take the puppies for her own evil uh, intentions. So, I remember actually watching this movie for the first time. I, When I was younger, I was actually subscribed to Disney Movie Club, and I got a whole bunch of animated movies. Like, I had movies still in the plastic I had never even opened. Half my DVD collection is Disney Movie Club. I had, like, Aristocats, Oliver and Company, this, you know, a whole bunch of movies. And one day, randomly, it, it was, like, I want to say 2015, 2016, I, I started digging through all these Disney movies. I was like, I've never seen these movies. I need to sit down and watch them. This was one of the first ones that I watched. And when it ended, I was like, I absolutely love that movie. And it does help. I'm an avid lover of dogs. I am a dog person. So this movie hits me right here in my core. And this is a movie that it stuck with me for so many years. I love this movie. I think it is such a beautiful movie. The animation in this movie is just stunning. Every single frame of this movie is it's mesmerizing. There, every single frame you, you're just like, wow, how did they do that? There's even a shot towards the third act to where all the, all the puppies got to run under the stairs. And there's, all these 90 puppies under the stairs. You're like, how did they do that? Like, it's it's incredible. I love the story to this movie. I think it's, you know, it's such an interesting story. I The movie is fun. It, it has a sense of sadness to it, but it's also, like, a lot of fun. I love our characters here. Um, Pongo and Purdy, they're go-to Disney parents, in my opinion. These They're dogs, and they went... God knows how far to save their puppies. And then the other additional puppies, you know, you got to love that. Um, and then we get possibly the greatest Disney villain ever, in my opinion. It, it's her and Maleficent, in my opinion, They're right there. Gaston is kind of right there, too. But, man, Corella DeVille is like the embodiment of evil. And she doesn't even have any superpowers. She's just an evil lady <laughs> that wants to kill these puppies to make a jacket. Disney in the 60s, ladies Disney, and gentlemen. Disney, bro. But it's, uh, what are you it's doing? so good. It's so good, and it makes you root for them to get out of the situation, you know? And there's a lot of situations like that in this movie, too. Like, oh, my God, are they going to make it? I don't know. Like, the part towards the end where they have to disguise themselves as Labradoodles and they're sneaking right in front of Corella DeVille. You're like, oh my God, oh my God. 
<laughs> you know, it's intense. Um, yeah, it, and it's also it's such a breezy movie. It flies by. You know, I really like that. It gets a little slow in the second act, but like a little slow. Um, and the the comedy is great. You know, they they go for slapstickness towards the end, which is something that they embrace more in the remake. But I, I think it works here. It's hilarious. It's fun, and it's a part of that Disney charm. You know, um. That's really it. I, I love this movie. I think it's a perfect movie, in my opinion. You know, um, it's it's a childhood classic of mine. AJ, thoughts on the original? So Sorry. my first time watching this movie was actually with Tyler. Um, I, we watched it last year, and like I wasn't allowed to watch Disney movies really growing up. So like now I'm experiencing like the things that I didn't get to experience uh, as a kid. And um, I would say this movie, I have like one word for this movie, and it's cute. This movie is it's like so cute, so adorable as far as the dogs are concerned. Um, the puppies, especially like my favorite scene, probably my favorite scene in the whole movie is when they're sitting there watching the TV, <laughs> and they're watching Thunderbolt, um, <clears throat> like this action dog star, and they're just like, just so invested in like him getting this robber or crook or whatever. And then the crook, you know, shoots at him and they're like, <laughs> Oh, he's dead. No. And then one of the dogs is like, nah, he's just, he's just kidding. He's faking them out. You know, I think, you know, I, I just think it's so cute. And I love like the voices uh, for the puppies and it's just like, it's immersive. As far as the overarching story, um, I like it. I think it is simple enough, and it kind of goes dark um, with Corello Deville trying to skin these puppies and like, like what what are you doing trying to skin puppies, man? Like, what kind of evil are you? Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would say she is definitely a classic villain, like you said. Um, I I do love um Pongo and Purdy. Like they're great. Um I I wish I was a little bit more invested in the actual owners, like in this story. Um, but I get it. It's not about the you know the the human characters really, you know. So um I do feel like this and we're gonna get into like the differences and stuff, um, but I feel like this movie really honed in on the animals, especially like towards the, the middle of the movie as well. When, you know, we get these, you know, farm animals and, you know, they're talking back and forth and they have this banter and they're like coming up with a plan and stuff like that. So, you know, that's interesting. Um, and yeah, we'll get into talking about that more with the remake. Uh, but yeah, like overall, I, I dig this movie. I like it. Um, it's a fun movie. I'll be watching this again. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 good Disney. You know, I I I did a ranking like three years ago of all the Disney animated movies up to a point. And a lot of those older movies are kind of mid to bad, to be honest, in my opinion. So getting to this, it's like high quality H2O, bro. <laughs> Breath of fresh air. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the remake, live action remake of 101 Dalmatians, released in 1996, directed by Stephen Herrick, who directed The Mighty Ducks, one of my favorite movies of all time. Such an underrated sports movie. Directed Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure, another great coming of age movie. And it is written by John Hughes, the director of Home Alone 1 and 2. Just like, think about that. And that makes sense with what we talk about later. But just think about that. Stars Glenn Close, Jeff Daniels, among other people. Hugh Larry is in this movie. Arthur Weasley Lord. is in this movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> and it tells the story Stacked. of a video game designer who owns Dalmatian meeting this other... She's a fashion designer who works for Corella DeVille, and they both get married, and, um, the, you know, the same kind of things happen to where the, you know, the Dalmatians have their babies, and then Corella DeVille captures them, and um, they have to rescue them. So, I watched this movie, we both watched this movie for the first time uh, 
what well, whenever we did 2022 because uh, i had planned on doing what i did with the animated movies doing with the live action remakes of ranking them and all that uh i watched <laughs> funnily enough i watched the sequel to this movie and gave up because it's so bad but uh we watched this one for the first time i didn't really know what to expect i was like you know, maybe, maybe it'll be good. This was when they actually cared about making these things. So it's like, you know, maybe it'll be good. And I, I actually really like this movie. This is so I want I rewatched it a couple of days ago. I really like this movie. I think it's a lot of fun. Now, do I really like it because I have so much nostalgia for the first movie? Absolutely. That that's not even deniable. And you know, it, it really shows with the movie. They keep a lot of what works with the original and they make enough changes. It kind of reminds me of the Robocop remake to where they they make enough changes for it to be on its own, but it still has that feeling of 101 Dalmatians. And I really like that. Um, I think the movie's a lot of fun. It, it does get a little bit slow. I think it's, it's shot very well. You know, it, it's crafted very well. The acting across the board, I think, is very good. Glenn Close as Corella Deville has to be the best casting of all time. The yeah, of all time, from the first line of dialogue she utters, you're like, "That's her." She said, "Anita Dolly," bang, that's her. She is phenomenal in this movie as Cruella DeVille. And it makes sense the way the the sequel, they marketed it just for only her. Nothing else. This she one kind of did that too, a little bit. But you definitely see why with the second movie. Because nothing else in that movie matters. But she is phenomenal in this movie. Um, the story is pretty much the same. And it, it, it still works, you know. But they... They kind of tweak it a little bit, and they go in different directions, which we'll talk about. And I think those different directions work. This is definitely Home Alone meets 101 Dalmatians. And if you don't like that, it's not going to work for you. If you're someone who, like, oh, Home Alone doesn't really, you know, tickle my funny, this is probably not going to work for you. There are literal scenes in this movie to where it's like, this is just Home Alone at this point. Like, the Dalmatians aren't even involved. It's just Home Alone at this point. I think it works. I think it's funny. But I could see somebody being like, this is stupid. Like, it, this is ridiculous. But I can kind of understand why they did that. Because I think Home Alone 2 came out before this. And, you know, people love that movie. And they love the first movie. So I could see why Disney would be like, let's fuse a movie that a lot of people love with another movie that a lot of people love, or two movies that a lot of people love. Put them together and get the guy that wrote one of those movies, or both of them. Get get the guy who did those movies to write uh, 101 Dalmatians remake. I personally think it works. I, I really like this movie a lot. It is no doubt one of the better Disney live-action remakes, although that bar is... <laughs> and the only really other good one that we're that exists, we're gonna talk about in November. But AJ, what are your thoughts on the remake? So I actually watched this movie before I watched the original, and I think I watched Cruella too before I watched the original. Um, this movie is cool. It's it's a, a also a cute family movie. Like I feel like this is a movie that you just put on, you know, with you know kids and things like that. But um, uh, like what you said with Glenn Close, I feel like this movie is Glenn Close's movie. Um, as far as Corella De Deville, um, she is the highlight of this film. She brings it probably more than any other actor in this film, uh, which is is needed. Um, as the the villain, um, but she is this is her film, man, and, and I'm not complaining about that. Um. This movie is silly. It's very silly. And, and it's even comparison to the original. Um Absolutely. it's it's like kind of like amped up like the cartooniness of this movie is amped up. Um and you know, we see people flying across the park and 
and stuff like that. Uh, getting electrocuted and all that stuff. It's, it's hilarious, hilarious stuff. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, it's a, a pretty cute film, and I the the dogs, the the puppies in this movie, they make me want to get a puppy, man. Like I want one. <laughs> especially like when they're first born and they're like coming over to put the collars <laughs> on them, the scene where they're putting the collars like on them. That. Like, I'm just like, I want one so bad now. They're adorable. Um, one thing in this movie, we'll talk about this when we get into the differences, but <laughs> one thing about this movie um, that I don't know if I would say it's a downfall, but it's it's something that the movie feels like it's kind of lacking on is the dogs don't talk. And that's a huge thing in the original that I love. And and I loved, like I said earlier, I love the voices for the puppies and Pongo and uh, Purdy. It's, but, you know, the dogs do not talk in this movie. Um, so we kind of have to, like, guess what they're barking and, you know, like that. It's it's fine for how the movie it goes and like how it plays out, um, but I don't know. Like that's one of the things I'm a little hung up on. But overall, this movie is a, a, a cute little family movie, um, and yeah, I like it. Moving on to the similarities, and the biggest similarity is that they it's essentially the same story. You know, they mm-hmm. tweak some character things in the remake, but. The, the story is the same. Corella DeVille's motive is the same. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the things that happen in the movie, for the most part, are the same. The ending is also pretty much the same, you know. Yeah, the um, characters minus, are the same, too. Like, same names and, you know. Minus a couple things. And that, I mean, that's really it, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. they, they, this was definitely one of those, like, they, they kept most of the same and then th- this is definitely one of those like it's 101 dalmatians live action mm-hmm. you know is it a little lazy sure but to be honest if it ain't broke don't fix it but i feel like they did that with the lion king and uh you know the lion king is the lion king anywho moving on to the differences and obviously it's a no-brainer the differences the remake is live action. Yeah, <laughs> and um, the big thing is, AJ touched on it before, is that the dogs don't talk in the remake. Now, it's not something that bothers me because I feel like they make an effort to show what the dogs are feeling in the moment. The mm-hmm. one scene that it does bother me is when Purdy, if the dogs come back and they find that the puppies are gone. And she kind of just lays there. They both lay there. Mm-hmm. And the, the scene works. And I feel bad just because I love dogs. But it, it's one of those, I wish we had at least a little bit of dialogue. You know, and it helps that in the animation, you know, you get the emotions with their eyes and all that. Yes. I do think this the remake suffers a little bit from what the Lion King remake suffers with to where... Animals can't emote the same way in, yes. in live action. But the thing is, dogs emote more than lions and all that. You you can do more with their emotions than yes. lions. And I think that's what works with this one. Is that and also, I want to add to that. Um, I think what helps this movie as well is that there is a human element to it. And they kind of play off of each other. And they, you know, you can feel... Um, the emotions from the humans and, you know, the dogs also reflect that. So that helps as well. So Roger is a video game designer, which that's a odd change, to be honest. It I is. Actually, I, that I, I actually prefer him being a musician, especially since he creates one of the best Disney songs ever. Um, this and is then, not a musical, though. That's that's yeah, another difference. Not. And well, the first one isn't quite a musical, but there is music in it. That scene is gone, which I hate yep. because I love it that is. scene. Because in the he's not a he's not a musician. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Anita is a fashion designer that works with Corella Deville, which I feel like you could have put that in the original because it, they have some sort of relationship in the original, and you do. don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. 
you know, she's just like, yeah, they act like close friends, and but we don't know why. It's like, why are you friends with this woman? At least in this movie, we're like, yeah, they work together. Yeah. Why you is know? she coming in your house, like, yeah. busting down your door? Like, who Literally. is she to you? <laughs> um, the, the biggest difference with this movie, other than the dogs not talking, is that they go way more for the slapstick comedy in sequences and i think it works um i think the scene where the dogs had to escape the the little house i think is hilarious mm-hmm. but um not good is the cgi it's yeah, when they're going when they're going down the little <laughs> i saw that i said oh, yeah wolf, um, literally yeah it was <laughs> i saw that i was like that came out in 1996 all right um, I, I don't know. And, and it's funny because there's one puppy at the end that gets thrown down and they just show it come out regularly. I was like, you should have just did. I, I understand why they did that because they're like, oh, yeah, we they're going down the, the pipe or whatever. But it's like, come on, man. Like you sacrifice like a point off the movie for bad CGI. If you would have taken it out, that's like a little negative gone. And that's the only case of bad CGI. So that mm-hmm. that's what makes it even more, you know. Is that the um, only case of CGI in the movie? Yeah. I feel like From it what is. I remember. Yeah. I was thinking when um they thought that Lucky was, you know, died, I thought that they were gonna have like a little CGI puppy, but it looked like it was real, oh. like a real a real puppy. Um, and I didn't even think it like I didn't know if it was animatronics or not, but like when they actually like woke him up. He was an actual puppy, so like this uh, is the only instance of CGI. <laughs> Jasper and Horace in this movie are so different, but they they act the same. Like they're both idiots in yes. both versions, but they're possibly stupider in the remake. Definitely. <laughs> Good lord, so it is hilarious. Like it, it, this movie, if this movie achieves anything, it is hilarious at points. You know, they Jasper and Horace possibly get the funniest scene in the movie to where they have to <laughs> these idiots they they want to jump over an electric fence and they stock and they stack these logs thinking that they can jump over it. <laughs> and w- what happens is so bad. I remember when we watched it, we burst it out laughing. It's hilarious. It's so funny. <laughs> And then after that, they go to Corella Deville against the barn and yarn animals, getting demolished. This woman does not give up. They stood and no it's chance. Hilarious. She's getting kicked by horses. It, it's, <laughs> it's brutal. It's low key brutal, it but it's hilarious. You know, um, I, I guess the the scene where they disguise themselves as labradoodles isn't in here. Mm-mm. And they kind of just get away, and and the 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 farm animals have their way with our villains, which you know it's fine. But mm-hmm. that scene is one of the better scenes in the original because it's like, oh, they're gonna get away because they're yeah. walking right in front of Corella. Um, Horace geez. and Jasper in the original see them walking, and they're like, oh, it's those the- aren't the same dogs. They're <laughs> it's like. You idiots, man. Um, I, I think that's pretty much it. You know, um, like like we said, the the movie is fairly similar. Similar, it just it, yeah. it tweaks some things. The only real big difference is that Roger is a video game designer, which I do like that he's making a game about Dalmatians, Dalmatians. and you see the game, and it's the animation from the movie. I was yes. like, that's kind of neat. I like that. Um. Oh, another, well, this is a small thing, um, but when, like, in the original, like I was saying, they were watching a show about Thunderbolt, um, <laughs> in the remake, they are sitting in front of the TV watching stuff, but they're it's watching the Aristocats, Aristocats. <laughs> yeah. and it's at the song that everybody yeah. wants to be yeah. a cat, and they said, turn they the changed, yeah, they, they changed, changed the channel. <laughs> I thought that was funny. That was Should have been watching. Well, it didn't come yeah. out. Did it come? Out? Did Oliver and Company come out 
at the time this came I think, out? I think, yeah, uh, this Oliver and Company definitely had come out. They should have. They should have been watching that. Yeah, that was dogs involved in it. Um, but they had a home. They changed it to Homeward Bound, which it was. <laughs> it, that's a dog movie. <laughs> they um uh, another change is how um Roger and Anita meet. They yeah. They they have a conversation. So so in the original day, you know, the dogs mess with them and then they both fall in the pond. And it's you know, it's really cute. In the remake, they Pongo is messing with um Roger to get him to meet up with Anita and Purdy, and he falls in the in the pond and he's like, Oh, this is horrible. He walks away, <laughs> he walks away, and then Purdy does the same thing to Anita, and then that's how they get together. I was like, that's a little drawn out. I feel like they, they had two Home Alone S sequences for the sake of having them. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's a change that's like wasn't really necessary. You could have had it be the same way in the original, and it would have trimmed down like 10 minutes, but whatever. Yeah. No, it's got to be longer. It's live action. <laughs> Moving on to the definitive version, and while I really enjoy the remake, the original is a classic. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, and it is the definitive version of 101 Dalmatians. But this isn't a case to where I think the original is so much better than the, the remake. The, I think the remake is still a very, very good movie that captures the spirit of this movie and has its own style to it. And to be honest, that's the best thing a remake can do, in my opinion. So I really enjoy both movies, but the classic original is my definitive version. AJ? Nice. Um, I have both of these movies at the same score um, for different reasons. Um, the original, it, it, it feels so authentic. It feels like just iconic. Like it's, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel like a, you know, like anything that's really ever been done before it. So, um, and the remake is a fun movie. It, it has, it gets a lot of laughs from me. Um, but I will say for me, the definitive version will be the original. Um, mainly because I I love the voices for the dogs and like we just don't get that in the the remake I I, I don't know something about that it's just I, I love it um, but yeah like I enjoy both of these movies and um, yeah but the original is my definitive all right. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of Originals vs. Remakes. This was a very fun one. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell for all notifications for future Nerd Talk videos and live streams. Our next episode of OVR will be in September for Hispanic Heritage Month with West Side Story. I think that's going to be a very interesting one. Um, we, wanted to, we didn't do Black History Month, so we were like, well, we want to... Throw some culture in the Vinner talk, if you will. Yeah. So we're going to do Hispanic Heritage Month. Very excited about that one. Um, so if you guys are excited for that, once again, please leave a like. And also comment down below which one is your favorite, if you've seen any of these or if you've seen none of them, which what are you doing? Go get on that. Um, once again, this is OVR. We'll see you on the next episode, everybody.